Hello everyone, Fat Man here, and today I am continuing my video game shenanigans by talking about one of my favorite PlayStation series of all time, Uncharted. After Naughty Dog finished blowing people away in the PS1 era with the Crash Bandicoot series, and then repeated the task in the PS2 era with the Jack and Daxter series, they moved on to the PS3 hardware to kick all the ass and take all the names. By bringing us one of the most beautiful looking action adventure platformers of all time. The Uncharted series basically cemented the idea that video games could serve as an equal to, or even better, means of telling and showing you a story than even film. Seriously, if you haven't played these games, pause this video right now and don't come back until you've played every single one because they are magnificent. Essentially a cross between Tomb Raider and Indiana Jones, these high production experiences continued to grow in popularity both critically and financially. And today, they are looked at as a definitive entry into any gamer's catalog, and I mean, how could they not be? The witty, smart dialogue, the intense action, precise platforming, and top-notch design of all of the game's worlds never ever slowed down for this franchise, at least in the main series entries. I want to preface this by saying there is truly not a single awful Uncharted game. There are a couple of lackluster side entries, but for the most part, this series stayed on the ball with graphical innovation and varied gameplay. I am including all Uncharted titles here with the exception of Fortune Hunter because oh my god that shit is ugly. But you probably forgot that one existed anyway so without further ado, here is Uncharted from worst to best. Number 7. Uncharted Fight for Fortune. Speaking of games you probably forgot existed, the first spot goes to Uncharted Fight for Fortune a turn-based card game released for the PlayStation Vita in 2012. As far as cash grab card game titles go, this one isn't painful or anything, but it is glaringly obvious that this was just an attempt to use the Uncharted characters to add a game to the Vita's relatively small library. The game boils down to being a Magic 101 ripoff with a splash of Yu-Gi-Oh mixed in there for good measure. And it provides no real challenge as long as you can juggle your resources well enough, which again, isn't really that hard to do. The only noteworthy thing about this game is that you could use the Vita to connect Fright for Fortune with Golden Abyss, another Uncharted title, and gain new cards based on what trophies you'd unlocked in Golden Abyss and your progress in the story at that point. Other than that, this title lacks any of the charm that makes this series so great, and boils down to pretty much only a few hours of original gameplay. Number 6, Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I want to be very clear here, I thought this game was average. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it, but I do think it's worth at least one playthrough. Released in 2017 for the PS4, Lost Legacy is a standalone expansion to Uncharted 4 that was deemed too large for DLC, so it got its own separate release. Nathan Drake isn't featured in the game at all, and instead we see the world through Chloe Fraser's eyes, as well as her partnership with Nadine Ross. So here's my issues with this game. It looks great, and it plays great outside of a few bugs here and there, but it does absolutely nothing to deviate from Uncharted 4. I understand that it was originally intended to expand upon that game, but there is absolutely nothing in this game that you hadn't seen a year earlier in Uncharted 4. And I'd even argue that Lost Legacy does a little bit less than Uncharted 4 did. For one thing, I'm sorry, but I really don't think they knew what they wanted to do with Chloe's character at this point. Instead of the absolute badass we got in Uncharted 2, she's basically reduced to a daddy's issues girl that just wants a friend. <sighs> and Nadine. You could replace Nadine with a plank of wood and it wouldn't make any f***ing difference. One of my biggest complaints with Uncharted 4 is that they introduce Nadine as a main adversary and they build her up to be a complete badass. But, they wind up criminally underusing her and they do that again here even though she is the co-star of her own game. Why even bother at this point? Why even bother including Nadine? That could have literally been any other Uncharted character. We learn nothing new or interesting about her. And many people loved Chloe and Nadine's chemistry, but honestly, I couldn't find any of that here. It was nothing close to as charming, witty, or funny as Sully and Nate. And the best part of all of their dialogue is when they are referencing Nathan Drake. That being said, the game is about half the length of a normal Uncharted game, so it never really does overstay its welcome. And the last few chapters of this game are everything I love about the series and more, including tight gameplay and fast heart-pounding action especially after Sam Drake joins the adventure because he adds such a layer of awesomeness to this thing. I don't know if any more side stories are being planned in the series since Nathan Drake's journey is officially over, but if there are, give me Sully and Sam. Give me Sully and Sam. Number 5. Uncharted Golden Abyss. Let the good shit roll because from here on out it is all solid stuff. 
Released in 2012 for the Vita, this marks the Uncharted series' first entry on a portable device, and man, what a start it was. The writing, the action, the worlds are just as good as a home console title. And even though this serves as a prequel, it does add a couple of things to the lore of the franchise. We have an interesting villain with excellent motivation in Guerrero. I'd say he's even on par with some of the mainline villains. The game is immersive and expansive, it doesn't cut any corners, and we get a legit like 30 plus chapters to play through here. And in my opinion, this serves as a wonderful introduction to the Vita's motion controls. A gimmick which for me never felt stale or tacked on, because everything here was easy to use and very responsive. Even the one and done character of Marissa, who I really wish we would have gotten to see again, was arguably as interesting as Elena was in the first Uncharted game. If you haven't played Golden Abyss and you still own a PlayStation Vita, do yourself a favor and go out and oh my god! Fuck, never mind, just steal it. Number 4. Uncharted Drake's Fortune Our introduction into the world of Uncharted hit the ground running and never looked back. Released in 2007 for the PS3, Drake's Fortune was an absolute monster, focusing on photorealistic scenery and backdrops, delivering dynamite vocal and motion capture performances. The characters of Nathan and Sully are instantly memorable and instantly likable, and they would stay that way throughout the entirety of this franchise. The dialogue just crackles, the visuals leap off the screen, the score is magnificent and swooping, and it knows when to be intense and when to back off and let a moment breathe. The adventure is heart-pounding and gripping, and just when you think you have it all figured out, the game says nope and throws in some supernatural elements to twist the story up. My only real complaint is that the gunplay isn't as precise and tight as it needs to be in some points, and the amount of backtracking in the earlier chapters can be a bit tedious, but for a first entry, all things considered, this was still magnificent and made you feel like you were playing through an adventure film. I mean, by chapter 3, my jaw was hitting the floor you came across a German U-boat suspended over the Amazon River, and if that sentence alone doesn't make you go out and play this game, nothing will. Number 3. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End Honestly, I had a tough time with the last few games rankings-wise. I personally think that Drake's Fortune and A Thief's End are on par, but I also need to try to be objective here, and there is one thing that cannot be denied. This is not only the best-looking game of the series, but one of if not the best looking games of all time. There were so many points in my playthrough where I was just standing there, absorbing these lush, vibrant graphics, and I was honestly in complete awe. To put it simply, A Thief's End looks real. There's no other way to state this. It looks like how we thought PlayStation 1 graphics looked like when we were younger. It looks 90% better than most professionally made films. And permit me to be so bold, but graphically, it shits on everything else in 2016 when this took the PS4 to a whole new level. Nathan and Sully and Elena are just as engaging here as they were nine years ago when they first debuted. The storytelling is just as grand and just as immersive. And even all the new characters, with the exception of Nadine Ross, are such a worthy addition to this franchise. If the game just wasn't roughly 33% scaling stuff, this might even be my top entry. But unfortunately, the pacing can suffer from time to time because of this, and the stealth system doesn't always work, but it is a welcome add-on and it does help to break up the gameplay a little bit. The amount of side collectibles is at an all-time high, not just in quantity, but in reference to world building. Exploring and finding journal entries detailing pirates and explorers that came before you as well as the history of the villages you are actively going through at the moment has never been a more enjoyable task in any other Uncharted game. To give one final note of credit, this game ends. It actually comes to a close. This game officially closes the chapter on Nathan Drake's adventures. And I'm not going to spoil how just in case but it is really satisfying and even somewhat bittersweet. For Sony to actually look at Uncharted and say, hey, let's give this game an actual fucking ending and not just end it on an open note, a cliffhanger, a stupid shitty cash grab, or just straight up do absolutely nothing with it, was marvelous. And if one character truly does deserve a great ending, it is Nathan Drake. Number two, Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. PS3, 2011. It has arrived. If ranking Uncharted 1 and 4 was tough, this is damn near impossible. Uncharted 2 and 3 are both in my top 20 favorite video games of all time. 
The story is immaculate and it just keeps building on a larger and larger scale. The characters start becoming more fleshed out with flaws and weaknesses and become even more likable and relatable because of that. The fact that there are two entire chapters in Drake's Deception where you're wandering around in a drugged out haze or just neandering through the desert and they're fun and they're great to play and a treat to look at is outstanding and truly a mark of how well of a job they did with this game. There are too many good sequences to count. The plane crash, the castle, the desert, the horseback chase. I literally am struggling to find something to complain about and am reduced to being the fat nitpicking bastard that I am, or I was going to be initially. This was the part of this script where I had written down Marlo, our main villain. Isn't that good? That's it. That's the only thing wrong with this game. But then a buddy of mine brought up a really, really good point. Prior to this, you'd had tough guy meatheads and military generals and just generally scary looking dudes. And initially, that was my only point of contention in Uncharted 3 was I didn't like Marlo that much. But then upon replaying it and upon my buddy pointing out that that's probably not where they wanted to go again, a more in the shadows villain that kind of controlled stuff with her brain rather than just being a muscled out fuck with 10,000 soldiers lined up works a lot better and becomes a lot more sinister. That being said, Uncharted 2 is still number one, so... So number one, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. You should have seen this coming since there was only one spot left, and I'm not gonna waste time by reiterating a bunch of things here. Released in 2009 for the PS3, everything Uncharted 3 nailed and did beyond well with started here. But it starts here without flaw, without anything really needing improvement, outside for I think the gunplay being at its absolute peak in Drake's Deception. We're introduced to Chloe here for the first time, a character that remains mostly badass throughout the series. The weaving of real life myths and legends with the game's supernatural elements is absolutely seamless and in my opinion at its best in Uncharted 2. Taking aside all the elements I've talked about to death throughout this list because this series just does them so well every single time, there is one bonus bald muscle cherry on top that just make this game my absolute favorite and that is Lazarevich. Our main villain here is legit threatening and was the bane of my existence when I played through this game on crushing difficulty. Most importantly for me, I have to be a little biased and choose Uncharted 2 because of a personal reason. Not only because it's a fantastic game in its own right, but it does have a little something special for me. I had all but really fallen out of video games at the point Uncharted was starting to release. Having missed the release of Drake's Fortune, I stumbled upon my brother playing Uncharted 2, and I was watching him traverse the ice caves along with Tenzin. The platforming caught my eye long enough for me to stay, and then fucking snow beast demon thingy started jumping up out of nowhere. and. Damn, I was just on the edge of my theoretical seat. Uncharted 2, well it bought me back. Sure, I gained 150 pounds and can recognize every flavor of Mountain Dew and Dorito by smell alone, but it was worth it for Uncharted 2. So everybody, I've been Fat Man, and thank you for tuning in to Zeitgeist OG. That was the Uncharted series from worst to best. What are some of your personal experiences with Uncharted, and what's your favorite to least favorite in the series? And let me know what series you'd like to see me and my friend Skeletor cover in the next installment of Worst to Best. Thank you for tuning in, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and maybe even the stupid little bell to stay up to date, and we will catch you guys next time. <laughs>